Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In uh, this video we will implement this Instagram profile UI. A lot of you asked for me to actually make these UI tutorials and especially just rebuild some uh, popular UIs. So here is one of these videos where we will build this profile screen. If you ask me that looks very very similar to the original Instagram UI. Um, of course we need a bunch of resources here like my profile photo, these story highlights, um, here these posts. You will get all of these in my GitHub repository as usual down in this video's description. So make sure to just um, get these resources. They are all here inside of the drawable folder before you start. But that is actually everything you need to do before starting here. And you might also notice that I have rearranged my microphone a little bit. Um, so I can better see my keyboard. Um, so that is something I want to try out here. In case my keyboard sounds a little bit too loud in this video, please let me know that in the comments. If it's okay, then please let me know that as well. So let's actually first think about how this layout is arranged. In the end, all we have is a big column for everything. We have our top bar here, which is not that hard to make. Then we have this section for the profile image and our profile stats. We have a section for the profile description, which is just a bunch of texts that we um, apply text styles on. Then we have this button section which, with these um, following message and email buttons. We have this section for the story highlights. And finally, of course, here this tab view. Um, we won't implement any functionality here, so we cannot click on anything. Um, we can switch the tabs, but I only filled the, the post tab here with some posts so that this actually looks pretty good. Let's actually jump right into it and whenever we build something uh, that might be not clear immediately then I will show you what exactly, what exactly we're building here in the UI um, by opening this emulator. So I am in an empty Compose project here in Android Studio and we actually don't want to put all this code in main activity. I want to create a file for that. I'll just do it in a root package. Um, Quite some people ask me why I put all the code inside of a single file here in these Compose tutorials. Um, that is of course something I only do for these tutorials um, where we don't have that much code. But in a real project I would structure that a little bit, little bit better if I have a lot of composables. So the file I want to create is a profile screen. And here we can create a composable that will be named exactly like that. And this profile screen just contains this big column that I talked about um, that we want to apply a modifier because this should fill our whole screen. So no, not the Java modifier, the composer one that fill max size. And in here we will then put all of our composables for this profile screen. And then here we want to start to create a composable for our top bar which, as I said, will just be this row here with the back arrow, our name, this bell icon and this um, menu icon. We want to set the vertex, uh, that's not a row here. Um, we want to have a name here that we can pass from the outset for the actual Instagram handle. I want to have a modifier. Then here we have our row. We set the vertical alignment to center vertically. The horizontal arrangement to space around, which will just um, make sure there is the same space between each of these composables. And we apply our modify here and say that fill max width. And in here we can then start to um, implement the logic for that which is, first of all, our back error. So that will be an icon with an image vector. We can get that from icons default arrow back. The content description will just be back. I will rearrange this a little bit. The tint will be color black. And I'll set the size to 24 dp and import dp. Then we will have a text for the username. The text will be whatever we pass for the name variable. We want to set the text overflow to ellipses. So what this will do is if this text gets too long, 
to um, fit into this space here, then uh, Compose will actually just append three dots after that, so that the user sees, okay, something actually follows there. I want to make the text bold, and I want to set the font size to 20 SP, import SP. And then for the two remaining icons here, the bell and the, th the menu icon, we can just copy this icon, paste it twice, and here we won't pass an image vector, instead we will pass a painter, because that will be an icon from our resources. So we can pass a painter resource from our drawable um, IC bell. Let's copy this, paste it here, and this will be IC uh, dot menu. And that is already it for this top bar. So we can go to our column and create that here. And the name, I will just choose my Instagram name. If you don't follow me there, do that now. And we want to also have a spacer. I'm not sure. Do we have some space? Um, a little bit. Let's let's have a spacer of 4 dp. Next up, we want to implement this profile section, which will actually be um, this whole container. So it will contain on the one hand a row here of this um, profile picture and the stat section. And it will also contain the profile description. So let's do that here, profiles, uh, profile section, which could potentially take a modifier. And then that will just be a column where we apply that modifier and fill max width. So this will be the column here. Um, that contains this row and this text section. So first of all, we have that row which will um, have the vertical alignment of center vertically. We will have a modifier of modifier that fill max width, and we will apply some horizontal padding. Um, so we will take the same padding for everything here. So we have this white space here and on the other on the other side as well. And inside here we now need our image actually, this round image. For that we want to create another composable because we can reuse that for our story highlights. So for that I will create another composable called round image. And that will take the actual image in form of a painter and a modifier. So we can actually pass a size for that image. And that will be an image, as I said. We pass the, uh, the, the image as a painter. I need to import that from uh, just the first one, the compose image. The content description will be null. And now with the modifier, we can use the, the modifier we passed. And we also want to have this little gray border around this image. First of all, I want to make sure that the aspect ratio is actually 1f, that it's a square. And we want to set match height constraints first to true. What this will do is, it will first um, look for the height here of this image and then adjust the width accordingly. Um, so whatever the height is, will be also assigned to our width. If this would be false, then it would first um, take a look at the width and assign to the height, whatever the width is. Then we want to have a border, which is the, the circular border of 1dp. The color will be color light gray. And the shape will be simply a circle shape, obviously. Then we can apply 3dp of padding. So we will just push in our actual image a little bit into its middle. So we have that little space between the border and the image. And then we can say we clip it to a circle shape. So this will now actually um, make sure that our actual image is round. And then with that round image composable, we can scroll up to our row and create that here. The image will be a painter resource 
unadrawable.philip, which is just my um, profile picture of Instagram. And I will apply modifier um, 100 dp size for that image. And what else? We want to have a weight of 3f. So in case you don't know what a weight is, we can apply weights in rows and in columns. And that will just make sure in this case that this image will take up 30% of our whole rows width. So we will also have the stat section, which we will apply a weight of 7f2. So this will be 30% and this will be 70%. Then let's implement the stat section next. Scrolling down, composable stat section, which will take a modifier again. Surprise, surprise, modifier. And uh, that will be a row of columns. So we will have our row of vertical alignment center vertically. The um, horizontal arrangement will be space around. So we again just evenly distribute the, uh, the items and composables and the modifier will be a modifier. So whatever we pass there, inside of this row, we will have three of these stat items. So we want to create another composable for that to reuse these composable profile stat. And for that we need on the one hand the number text, which I will pass a string here. So in a real app you would probably use a, a number for that. Um, but because we want to have that k here, here we want to round these, um, this number. That would be quite a lot of functionality we would implement here, we would need to implement here. Um, so I will just use strings here for these numbers. In a real app you would of course write that functionality, but this video will already be long enough. Then we will also have the text, so if it's a post, if it's uh, followers or stuff like that, and a modifier. And then in here we can have a column. We set the vertical arrangement to center. We set the horizontal alignment to center. We apply a, uh, the modifier we passed. And then here we just have two texts basically. So first of all, the actual number obviously. So the number text. We want to have the font weight. Um, want to set that to bold. Want to set the font size to 20 SP. And the other text will be a little bit smaller. For that we will use this text here. And that is actually it. We also want to apply some space in between these two texts. So let's do that here a spacer with uh, the height of just 4 dp. So there's just a little bit of space between these two texts. And then inside of this row, we can um, create these profile stats here. This one will be 601 or whatever you like. The text will be posts. Then we can duplicate that twice with control D this will be 99.8k. Let's do 100k because I actually passed the, the 100k. Thanks again, um, followers. And I think 71 following, I think it's called. Yes, 72. And then we can uh, take this stat section and put it into our profile section here after this round image. Let's apply some space with a width of 16 dp. And then take our stat section and put it here. And here we then want to apply the same weight as for this round image. I mean, not the same weight, but we want to apply weight here. Modifier weight 7f. 
and that looks good. Now what's missing is this profile description. We could actually also just launch our app, use this profile section, implement it here, profile section, and then take our profile screen, implement it here in main activity, and then let's launch this. Also make sure that you use the Compose version beta 09 and the Gradle plugin 1.5.10 because for lower versions this never really worked for me. So let's see in our emulator and you can see that is exactly what we expect. Um, there's actually no space between this top bar and our profile section. Um, now we can actually either implement a little more space in our spacer or what I want to do is I want to apply a little bit padding in our top bar. Let's apply modifier of padding and let's say 10 dp. And then this should look much better. Exactly. So that is how we want to have it. We might also decrease this um, menu size a little bit. Let's do that. Um, where are our icons here? Let's say 20 as uh, 20 dp for our IC dot menu, and that should look good. I will now launch my other finished app again, so I can show you everything we do here. So next up, we will have our profile description. That will take a bunch of parameters. So on the one hand, it will take our display name, which is here this programming mentor. Then it will take a description, which is um, this text here. It will take a URL and it will take some uh, people that actually follow me and how many others follow me. Um, so description, a URL, followed by which is just a list of strings and other count I will just call it so how many others are following me and here I want to have some letter spacing we just want to apply to all text so I just want to have that as a variable so we can control it up here which will be 0.5 sp and the line height of 20 sp and then we put all of our text in a column, apply a modifier, modifier that fill max width, and again, horizontal padding of 20 dp. And then in here, we will have tons of texts. On the one hand, we will have a text for the display name, which will be printed in bold, which will have our letter spacing and our line height. Then we can copy this text, paste it here, that will be the description which will not be in bold, the rest will be the same. Then a text for the URL, also not in bold, but for this one we will actually assign a color of 0xff um, 3d 3d 9 1. This is now the official link color um, but just something that, that looks quite similar. And what comes now? Well now comes this followed by part which is a little bit more tricky because we have these bold texts um, in this text and yeah that makes it a little bit more tricky. What we want to do for that is called, we want to use an annotated string builder. That annotated string, we can just um, apply certain text styles for certain parts of a text. So um, we actually just want to check if our list is not empty, else we don't want to display any text. And then we can say, okay, text, and we set the text to build annotated string. And here we just have a usual string builder but with some extras. So we can actually push some styles on top of a stack that will be applied for the upcoming text that we append here. And if we don't need these styles anymore, we can simply pop them. So you can see how that works. We can define a bold style, which will be a span style. 
um, the color will be color black and the font weight will obviously be bold. Then we can say we append followed by and a space. So that is this first section of this text which is not in bold but now comes a follower that will be printed in bold. So after we append this text we can say push style bold style and now this bold style is on top of our stack and will be applied to all the text that we append now until we push another style on top of that stack or we pop it. If there's no style on top of that stack it will just take the style of this text composable here. So now we actually want to loop through our list and display these followers. So followed by for each indexed I would say call this name and actually take this push style and put it into inside of this for loop because now for each of these followers we want to um, take this bold style we want to append the name of that follower and we want to pop the bold style because now we want to append a comma so the comma here is not printed in bold and if we pop this then we will just remove this bold style from the stack but we only want to append a comma if it's if we're not at the last index because then we um, use this and 17 others so if the index is less than our followed by dot size minus one then we can say we append this comma and then after this for loop we want to append this and 17 others. So if our other count is actually greater than zero, or actually greater than two, because otherwise we would have um, displayed these two people already here in this for loop, then we want to append space and space. We want to push our bold style again, and we want to append our other count others. So that is essentially how this works if we have different text styles for the same text. And then we still want to apply our letter spacing here and the line height for this um, for this text composable but that is pretty much it for our profile description. So we can scroll up and display that in our profile section below this row instead of our column um, profile description. The display name will be Programming Mentor. Uh, the description is a little bit trickier now. Um, let's do it like this uh, because we want to have some emojis in here. Um, I think I'll leave this just out. You can just Google for these emojis and copy them inside of Android Studio, but that is something I want to do here. Let's just check these texts here. So 10 years of coding experience. Then we want to have a new line that says want me to make your app. Send me an email. Another new line and subscribe to my YouTube channel. For the URL, I take my YouTube URL followed by will be a list of, um, yeah, let's just take the same name as Coding in Flow and our dear Mia Khalifa, whoever that is. And other count is 17. Let's launch this app and see if that looks decent. And yes, I would say that looks decent. So of course with these emojis it looks much more realistic, but yeah, you can do that on your own. You can also of course implement your own Instagram page, but that wouldn't change too much here. You would just copy these emoji um, UDF8 codes inside of your description and that's pretty much it. So next up we have the story highlight section. 
I'll relaunch the other app here again. And for the highlights section, we want actually we have we have these action buttons before. Um, so we have these action action buttons now and then this highlight section. So let's make these first composable button section and this will only take a modifier. Here I want you just assign a minimum width for these buttons except for the last one which is just squared of 95 dp and I want to define a default height for all of these buttons of 30 dp. Then we will put these inside of a row. We want to set the horizontal arrangement to space evenly and the modifier to our modifier we pass. And inside here we will then have our action buttons for which we will create a composable action button which will take a modifier it will take a nullable string and it will take a nullable icon which will be an image vector nullable because not every of our buttons has an icon and not every of our buttons has a text as this last one and some of these buttons have both. So we can pass both, but we don't have to. So again, this button will consist of a row that will center its content. So horizontal arrangement of center, a vertical center vertically, modifier will be the modifier we passed. We want to have a border for that button the border width of 1dp, the color will be our light gray again and for the shape we apply a rounded corner shape of 5dp and then we just need some padding to actually push in the text to the button's middle so let's say padding 6dp and then inside of this row we have our text and our icon so the text um, we actually only want to display the text if if the text passes a parameter is not null. So if that is the case, we want to have the text here. Font weight I will set to semi bold and the font size to 14 SP. Now the same if our icon is not null we want to apply an image vector of icons default um, actually not icons default because we passed that from the outside so yeah just our icon content description null and tint will be black like this and that should be it then we can take this action button composable and put it four times I think in this button section action button the first text is following the icon is now we can use icons a default I think it's called uh, keyboard error down and the modifier will be modifier dot default min size here we can assign a minimum width for that composable of our minimum width and the height of our height and then copy this action button three more times so we have four in total for the message the email and this drop down message email this won't have a text this will just have the icon the icon 
and here we will assign a size of our height so it's essentially um, uh, squared and also for this email icon we can simply remove this and the message icon as well but uh, that should be it for the button section we want to place that in our profile screen below our profile section I will apply a spacer of 25 dp this time then our button section and another spacer of 25 dp and then let's launch the app and take a look at our buttons if these look fine and yes the buttons look fine but it looks like we don't fill the whole width of our screen with our row um, let's can we pass that up here yes fill max width we launch this and that now looks much better next up we will have the story highlights down here so we call this high light section which will take on the one hand the modifier and on the other hand it will take a list of highlights that we need to create a data class for um, I'll launch the other app again so you can see we somehow need on the one hand the image for the highlight and the text so for that we will create a data class in our root package called story highlight on the one hand we have our image which is a painter and the text of type string so we can pass our highlights here in form of a list of story highlights And such a story highlight is very simple actually. Um, first of all, we want to have a lazy row here, so we can have multiple of these highlights. So lazy row, apply the modifier, and in the lazy row we have a bunch of items. Well, how many items do we have? Highlights dot size. And in this items block, we can now define how one of these items look like. So how one highlight looks like. That will just be a column um, that consists of our round image and our text. We will center the content inside of this column. Horizontal alignment, center, vertical arrangement, center. Um, do we need a modifier? Yes, because we want to apply some padding to the end of 15 dp so that we just have um, uh, this distance here between story items this distance will be um, taken care of that we um, pass our horizontal padding to our whole section and then instead of this column as I said we will have our round image we can reuse here round image the image will be whatever highlight we're currently composing so highlights at the index of it that image then the modifier for that image now we can pass a size for which I will pass 70 dp and then we just have our text for which we can use our highlights at the index of it.text the overflow set to ellipsis again and the text line let's set to center and that's it for this highlight section that's really simple actually let's scroll up to our very start here and instantiate that here highlight section um yeah the highlights is a list of story highlights and I will just copy these over here. You can create your own story highlights. Um, 
this one here. So you can see either write this off or um, yeah, just have your own highlights. I use my um, drawers here that Android Studio for some reason doesn't recognize because the import is wrong. Let's remove that. Mm. I am not sure which one. I think we just need to replace it or remove this rather. Yes. Like this. Okay, now the errors are gone. So we just have a list here of story highlights and we say, okay, this the first highlight has this image and this text and so on. That's simple. I think you get it. And for this whole section, I will apply a modifier of fill max width as usual and also as usual with horizontal padding of 20 dp. And then let's launch this, see if that looks fine. And yes, it does. So if we would actually have more of these highlights, then we could scroll here horizontally. But we don't have that, so we can't. <laughs> um, the next thing is uh, the, the tab layout and then the content of the first tab layout. And then we're already done. So tab layouts in Compose work a little bit differently than using XML because there is no um, initial logic for these tabs. We need to define that what happens if we click on a tab. We need to define um, how these tabs look like when they're inactive, how they, are, uh, how they look like when they are active and stuff like that. So let's create our composable of, um, that's called post tab view. That will take a modifier as usual and then it will take a function on tab selected. And this function will just give us the selected index. So whenever we select a tab here, this function will be triggered. So we also get the selected index in our root composable. So we can actually display the corresponding content for the corresponding tab. Inside here, we will have a variable selected tab index by remember. Mutable state of zero. So the first tab is initially selected. Now this gives us an error. We want to scroll to the very top to our imports. Duplicate remember twice. Call that set value. Get value. And that will make our error disappear. Then we will have our inactive color that I will define up here. So if a tab is not selected, that is just the color that we give the icons and uh, the, the border. And that will be 0xff77777. Uh, are these six sevens? Yeah, now they, no, they are. Or is it? Yeah, like this. <laughs> and then we use something called a tab row, which is something that comes from Compose already and is obviously a row of tabs. We need to include the selected tab index here, which is just our state. And when that changes, the tab row will also highlight that. We want to apply a background color to that tab row of color transparent, content color of color black, and a modifier of our past modifier. And inside of this tab row, we can now construct multiple tabs. And such a tab wants to know if it's selected. Um, how do we know if this first tab is selected? Well, it is selected if the selected tab index is equal to zero because the index of our first tab is zero. When we click on that, on that tab, we want to set the selected tab index to zero and we want to trigger our on tab selected with zero. We want to make sure that we uh, apply some colors, which are these um, selected content color is color black and the unselected content color is inactive color. So when this tab is selected, the, the color will be black. You can see the icon and this bar 
is black and the others are just kind of gray. And now this tab gives us this column scope. So this is already a column here in which we can put some content. And in this um, tab, we just put our image essentially. And that is it. But if you have multiple composables, you can stack them here. So the first tab will have an icon with the painter set to a painter resource, our drawable IC grid. Content description will be, let's say, posts. The tint will be um, if the selected tab index is zero, color black, so then we have a black icon and else we apply our inactive color. And the modifier will be modifier that's padding of 10 dp and a size of 20 dp. And we could actually instantiate all these tabs here in a for loop by having a list of images and texts again. Um, let's actually do that. That is quite spontaneous here, but that is a lot cleaner. We can use our story highlight for that because that also gives us an image and a text. And for that, let's just, let's just um, rename this pressing shift F6 to image with text. So it's just a little bit more general and this is not only used to describe story highlights. So then we can actually um, uh, pass that list here of image with text. Um, like this. And then we can say instead of our tab row image with text that for each indexed. Um, let's call this item. And for each of these, we instantiate such a tab. And now this tab is selected. If the selected tab index is equal to our index, so wherever we have a zero, we replace that with index here as well. This painter resource will be our item.image and the content description will be item.text. And that is actually it for this tab layout. Let's also directly implement the post section. So um, just for the post grid, this will take a list of posts, which is just a list of images, list of painter and a modifier. And this will be very quick and dirty here. We want to use a lazy vertical grid for that, which is just a grid view that um, lazily loads these items and composables. And we need to define how many cells do we have actually, or how many columns we have on that grid layout. Here we can set that to fixed. So grid cells dot fixed, and we say, okay, we have three columns. And this wants us to annotate this with experimental foundation API. Let's do that. And then just for each of our posts, so items, posts at size, we have an image that we can create here with the painter being equal to our current post that image, uh, just our current post. Content description, I'll, I just set it to null. We want to set the content scale to crop. So we just crop these images because they are not exactly squared. And apply a modifier of aspect ratio of 1F. And we want to apply a border. So you can see there is this wide border here between these posts. And here I will actually apply a little trick because I'm not sure if we can set borders in Compose just for um, single sides here, because you can see on the left and the, the top side for these posts, there is no border. And this would be quite difficult to have the logic that we only have these um, borders in between posts and not at the, at the edges here of our section. 
I will use a little trick here. I will just define a border of, let's say, 1dp. Color is white. And then we go up to our lazy vertical grid, which contains all of our um, posts. And we apply our modifier we passed dot scale and we just scale it by 1%. So we make it 1% bigger than it is usual and what this will cause is that the borders that would usually display at the edges of our section they are now pushed to the outside of our screen so we don't see them anymore and we only see these here. So that is a little workaround in real app. I don't know if I would do that but this is just the, the quickest way to do that. And that is it. Let's scroll to our top here. And here we want to keep track of the selected tab. So var selected tab index by remember is zero initially. And then below our highlight section, we have a little bit of space, so hide dp then we have our post tab view with our list of tabs so image with text is a list of image with text we can pass a painter resource the first one is for the IC grid um, what is wrong here is it called oh, it's not an image it's, uh, yeah it's called image and this one is called text. That is posts. We can copy this three more times. For the reels, the um, IGTV. And I think I called it profile. Didn't know how to call that section where others just um, mention you in their posts. But here in this Lambda block of this post tab view, we get the selected tab index one that changes. So we can just update it here. And now to make our tab view actually work and replace the corresponding content, we can have a win expression selected tab index when that changes. If it's zero, we can just put the composable in here. We want to replace it with, actually we don't need these um, curly braces. We can just say, if it's zero, we want to replace the content with a post section. And the post here is just a list of images, painter resource, other drawable, KMM. Duplicate that five more times. What do we have here? Intermediate developer. Master logical thinking, bad habits, multiple languages, and learn coding fast. And this also wants us to um, annotate it with experiment experimental foundation API. Let's do that. And we don't want to forget to pass a modifier of filmx with. So that is it for our UI. Let's launch this. And hopefully this should work. There we go. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, so you can see we can switch these tabs. In a real app you could of course add some animations here that this maybe fades out or actually gets um, actually slides to the left or stuff like that. But the functionality is not the focus here in this app. And also, I think the, the actual Instagram app has nested scrolling here. That is also something I ignored here because that is a little bit more complicated to do with Compose. But I hope you enjoyed this UI tutorial. If you want me to do that more often, to just um, make some cool popular UIs from popular apps in Jetpack Compose, then tell me that in the comments and also tell me what kind of UI you would like me to do. 
maybe Spotify or Facebook or whatever you like. And I will take a look if I can do that and make a tutorial out of it. Um, yeah, and I will also, of course, just look how you like this video and how many clicks it gets and how many likes. So give it a like and give it a comment. And also, if you want to learn much more about Android than I can show here on my YouTube channel for free, then check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website. There you will find more advanced Android premium courses. Um, they are paid, but yeah, they just boost your Android knowledge to the next level. So in case you want to learn more about Android, you want to support me and my work so I can keep doing this free stuff here, then check it out and enjoy these courses. Apart from that, I wish you an excellent day. Thank you for watching this far. And yeah, I really hope I can welcome you in the next video again. Bye bye.